Hi, Huckleberry here, and this is part two of a two-part video on DHCP. Here you can see that we are looking at a little DHCP server that is built into a TCP link wireless router. Now, whether or not you were setting up a DHCP server on a Windows server, or if, it was, or if this was on a Linux box, or whatever, it's still going to be pretty much the same. Now, this is the simplest case, but it gives you the idea of, of what you need to set up. So, the first thing you'll notice is that DHCP is enabled, and then here's your starting IP address that it's going to hand out, and your ending IP address that it's going to hand out. So, if you remember what we call this, the scope. So the scope is the entire range of IP addresses that it is able to hand out. Now, if, this, if you run out of IP addresses, it's not going to go to 192.168.0.200, for, for example. And next you can see that we have the address lease time. So we see here that that's set up for 120 minutes. So what does that mean? When an, a host receives an IP address, it only, it's only allowed to keep that for a maximum amount of time. That's the address lease time. So the maximum amount of time in this case is 120 minutes or two hours. Now, what is the significance of the lease time? It really comes into play if you have a busy network where you have wireless devices that are coming and going and and and, uh, and need to have a, uh, need to grab DHCP. So if you had a situation like that, you could actually have if the lease time is very long, then it's then a computer or that has already left the network is still going to hold on to a lease. Therefore, if you don't want to run out of, of leases in, on a busy network, you need to uh, set the, the lease time to be a relatively short uh, amount of time. So you might ask, why not just set it to, you know, always just set it for like a, tiny, a short amount of time, like five minutes. Well, if you did that, then you're going to create an awful lot of network traffic that's unnecessary. So basically, you want to come to a compromise between creating too much network traffic and not running out of IP addresses. And next thing you can see is the default gateway. So the DHCP uh, will hand out that default gateway of 192.168.0.1. And you also see that you can set up the primary and secondary DNS servers. Uh, in this case, we have not done that, but it could be done certainly. And now you can look at your client list. So this is going to show you all the clients that you've actually that have actually been handed an IP address. And you can see uh, you can see the names of the clients, um, the MAC address uh, that that client has, the IP address that it's been assigned, and the lease time. And last but not least, you have the address reservation. Now, we have not done anything here, but you could. So an address reservation is if you want a specific IP address to always be assigned to a server. So that server is going to always keep the same IP addresses. Many admins like, uh, like that, and it's a convenient thing to do. So you could set that up here if you needed to, to do that. So now we look at uh, DHCP in detail in Wireshark. So why do we look at it in Wireshark? Well, if you understand a protocol to the packet level, then you understand that protocol fully. No one's going to understand that protocol better than you. And the best way to look at uh, protocol to the packet level is through Wireshark. So I've done a, a packet capture in uh, Wireshark of DHCP, what I did actually was I started the packet capture and then I did a IP config forward slash release, which should cause the uh, which should cause the host to go ahead and grab another IP address from DHCP. So the first thing you see here is a whole lot of stuff. You see some DHCP down here, but uh, you see a whole lot of other stuff that we don't care about. So you need to do a filter here. The thing is that you have to filter by boot P. 
So it's like this. You don't filter by DHCP. Now we can see that our DHCP packets, our DHCP packets. So here we have our DHCP release, and then you have the DORA, D-O-R-A, Discover, Offer, Request, ACK. So let's look at the Discover packet. Make this a little bigger here. So in the Discover packet, what do you see? You see that the client IP address is 0, .0, .0, .0, .0 because it doesn't have an IP address yet. And what the DHCP Discover is doing is it's broadcasting, and you can see the broadcast over here. It's broadcasting to 255, 255, 255, 255. I'll make that a little bigger. You can see that. So it has to broadcast because it doesn't know where the DHCP server is yet. Next, we look at the offer. So in the offer, the DHCP server now, which happens to be 192.168.0.1 in this case, is broadcasting back out again and with, the, with a suggestion for, hey, here's an IP address that you can take. Now here's that IP address right here, the 192.168.0.102, but you notice it's still broadcasting it because it does not the uh, client doesn't have a, uh, a DHCP address yet, so it has to broadcast. Then you get to the DHCP request, and that is again from the client to the server. And once again, the client still has an IP address of 0.0.0.0 because it has not fully completed the DHCP process and it's broadcasting again to the DHCP server. And now you have the DHCP ACK and the DHCP ACK is coming from the server to the client and the server is basically saying, yes, you can have this, this back. That is the end of this video. This has been Huckleberry. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave a, a comment and I would be happy to answer for you. Thank you very much for watching.